is folks, Daniel Wickwire here, and welcome back to Kaiju Movie Review. I am, of course, joined by my ever-loyal co-host, Mr. Zach. I am here, and it is good to be recording, which I guess this won't be the case when this comes out, but at the, at the time we're recording this, I believe this is the first episode we recorded in the 2017 calendar year. That's true. That is correct, because the last one released two weeks ago. Uh, and we we didn't yeah it should be the first yeah, one our, in our the... last one was right, was right before New Year's so yeah. yeah yep we are officially in 2017 like everybody else we're with the times anyhow uh, this episode I assure you Mr Zach will not assault me with a very large desk fan no I will not and to start off Mr Zach what is your bit of news for the day okay well I got a little bit of a two parter here. You know, just one short thing, and then another thing I, I read a couple of days ago that I thought was just kind of interesting. First off, uh, Shout Factory has announced a DVD release for Gekaso Sentai Car Ranger, so that's exciting. The, Car Ranger. The ser- yep. Uh, the, the series that would go on to become Power Rangers Turbo in the United States is getting its uh, subtitled DVD release uh, in the spring, I believe. Uh, secondarily, I found very, very interesting. So it was recently revealed that for the production of Uchu Sentai Q Ranger, the 41st Super Sentai series, it turns out that for the first time since 1979's Battle Fever J, there will be an American company involved in the production of a Super Sentai series. Don't everybody go freaking out. It's just Bondi of America. Well, yeah, but it's very obvious that they're doing this because they plan on, you know, uh, they plan on releasing it in the States. But that does make me wonder, because the last couple of years, they've kind of been skipping around, mm-hmm. as, as you know, because we got Gokaiger and Go Sager is kind of a weird kind of amalgam season because yep. we can't do all the angel stuff because religious people are, are crazy and I don't know why they didn't do the pirate stuff I've seen go go Kaiser like seemed like a perfect series to to uh, adapt because it was just all there they skipped go busters which I'm assuming is because of the abundance of live action footage yeah yeah because go busters seem like the perfect series to ad- adapt because they took so many things from power rangers yeah yeah the robots were called zords they actually said it's you know it's morphin time when they transformed like go busters seemed like it was made with an american audience in mind never happened oh, that's weird kill user right kill user we got that as dino charge and dino supercharge then they skipped tokyo again probably because there's a lot of live action stuff I thought it was whatever. the train penis thing, which they easily could have just edited or cut that, out. That you know, or and it could it could have been that too. But I have a feeling it was more just because of all the live action actors. Because like, if you did Go Busters, like Enter the main villain is is live action. He's not yeah. a he's not a guy in a suit. Yep. yep. So it causes a lot of issues. It which is dumb because they had a human villain in Dino Supercharge apparently, eh. the for the for the first time since like the Disney years because they haven't done that forever. Yep. And then they are adapting Ninja as Ninja Steel and Ninja Super Steel. That's really so stupid. So dumb. Right? Can't so that makes that. me wonder if they're right. I, I wonder if they're gonna skip Zuosier or if they're gonna adapt that and then get Q Ranger in like three years. Because I, no I don't know. There was a rumor a couple of years ago or a year or so ago that Netflix was going to pick up Power Rangers, which would have been fantastic because they would have allowed them to actually do full adaptations yeah. and not this two 12-episode season bullcrap that Nickelodeon's making them do. Because that's why that's that's a big reason why Samurai and Megaforce and Super Megaforce were so bad because they were just rushed. They had to condense 50 episodes into two 12-episode seasons, and it just killed any chance that Bandai had to kind of, or not Bandai, excuse me, any chance Saban had to really kind of recreate the the Saban era, the original Saban era type shows with the overarching plots and, you know, character development and all that stuff because, man, not to get off on a tangent, but I watched Samurai. I never watched Super Samurai. I watched Power Rangers Samurai. It was bad. 
It was bad, bad, bad. Oh, no, it's so, terrible. It's, no they, offense they to anybody make... that likes it. No offense to anyone who liked it. I watched a couple episodes of, Go, of, of not Go Kyger, excuse me, Power Rangers Super Mega Force because I'm a huge Go Kyger fan. Terrible. They Just tried, bad. They tried too hard to make it like the original Power Rangers series. Like, yeah, in every I, I, way, make it like it. It's yeah, so terrible. Exactly. I, I don't know if your kids are still into Power Rangers, Dan, so not I'm really. sorry. Okay, well, then you've been spared. Dino, oh, no. Dino Charge, I watched the first couple episodes of Dino Charge. Dino Charge is probably the best thing that's come out of the Neo Saban era, but it's still not good enough that I want to sit and actually watch the whole thing, you know? Yeah. Even with it only being 24 episodes, like, it's just not, it's just not for me. I'd much rather just watch the Super Sentai stuff. Is this just, I just find it far more entertaining. No, so, I understand. Sorry, we'll I got off on a little bit of a tangent. Uh, it, like, my tangent probably lasted about a fourth of the movie we're going to talk about today. So, why don't you go ahead? Well, I'd also like to note uh, from Zach's earlier comment, also no offense to our religious fans either. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, well, we're just poking, I, I mean, don't worry. I mean, I mean nothing to, to nobody, but, but we can all admit that, that somebody, had they adapted Ghost Sager using the religious themes of the original series, there is no way people would have let that go. Oh, no, never would have. Never. Anyhow, my news for the day is a little less... I mean, it's relevant, and it's still it's somewhat impactful, but we'll see what comes of it. Um, a gentleman named Mr. Thomas Toll is the, uh, was the CEO and founder of Legendary Entertainment, Legendary, Legendary Pictures. You know, of course, they've handled a lot of big movies as of late. They did Pacific Rim, they helped with Jurassic World 2, they did Godzilla, they're doing King Kong. They kind of started out small and got very, very big, and pretty much handled most of any really big film. Well, uh, Mr. Tall here established the company in 2005, sold it to a Chinese group in 2016, and has stepped down from his CEO position. Not to make it all sound bad and terrible and all that fun stuff, he will still be assisting with the projects he's done, like uh, Godzilla and King Kong, which they refer to as their MonsterVerse film series or group of films, so he will still be an executive producer on that, and he still will have some affiliation with the company, but he will not be leading it anymore. So, again, we'll see what comes of that. I mean, it makes sense that they'd call it the MonsterVerse since they've confirmed that Godzilla and King Kong are kind of together. Well, not really kind of, it's blatantly obvious. <laughs> blatantly. Anyway... <laughs> Today, we are going to be talking about Gihara, the dark and long-haired giant monster, a.k.a. Chohatsu Daikaiju Gihara. It was released in February 24th, 2009 on Japanese TV, particularly NHK, which is a Japanese television network, on one of their little shows called Play TV Perform. It is a 20-minute long TV special that pays homage and lampoons tokusatsu films of the 60s, uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, and even into the modern era, but it's mainly the older Showa films. The stars of the film are G, uh, Gigi Boo, Mark Chinnery, and Mina Fuji. Executive producer, we'll get into the actual staff here later on because there are some big names here on the production side of it. Uh, actors, again, I don't really keep up with enough, though I do recognize several of them. Executive producer is Shinji Higuchi, director is Kiyotaka, Tagu uh, Tio Kiyotaka Taguchi, and the stunt coordinator is the legendary Tsutomu Kitagawa. So our little movie here begins on begins with a scene that's very reminiscent of one of the best classic kaiju films ever made, War of the Gargantuas, where a boat is attacked by Gahara, which is a giant, essentially a giant mass of hair that happens to have a monster underneath of it, and essentially destroys the boat. There's a survivor, like most of these movies start. Their, our main, our quote-unquote main character, Hideo, lives at home with his mother and sister and is a reporter or a freelance reporter or a small-time reporter covering the case of, of this monster attack. After he goes and interviews one of the only real survivor, he makes his way to a shrine that worships Gahara, some kind of ancient legendary creature, and some shrine they have up on the hill to seal Gahara or keep him in place, similar to Daimajin, like a shrine to keep him in place, something like that was destroyed or it's missing, and now Gahara's running wild and 
yada yada yada. The government, the Japanese government or SDF, sets up the Monster Disaster Headquarters in Kaz uh, Kanazawa. And because they set up in Kanazawa, it instantly means Gahara is going to attack Kanazawa, which he actually does very shortly after. And of course, chaos ensues. Chaos does indeed ensue as they begin to evacuate the city just before Gahara attacks. Of course, the monster ends up attacking during the evacuation, and we get, you know, some nice crowd scenes of Japanese civilians running like mad, just like in the classic Godzilla films and and other and other tokusatsu films of the era, because it was a very common uh, device to have the r random crowds of running civilians. And, of course, the military then tries to fight off Gehara, thinking that the monster has to have some kind of weakness, and they are going to figure out how they can hurt it. Of course, their attacks simply cause the monster to, monster's hair to fall off, and as soon as the hair hits the ground, it begins exuding a poisonous gas that begins to kill many of the troops that are attempting to fight off Gehara. This leads the military not only to realize that their attacks are not really doing anything because of all of the hair on the monster's body, but it also makes them realize that they need to come up with some other way of dealing with the monster. Enter a random American guy that comes in and has a secret weapon with which to fight off Gehara. You see, Dan, I know you're laughing, and you know this is true. <laughs> like, no, I, I, he is my favorite part of that movie. Like, well, favorite actor in that movie, because he, he's... Like, watch, watch, watching him speak Japanese was kind of awkward. It's almost it's like he so was, funny. like, unsure of what he was saying. <laughs> like, I believe it was anyway. intentional that, that he was... I think it was to make fun of, you know, in English translations, they have somebody doing English or, or like, a Japanese actor, oh, like, yeah. attempting to... But they have this American actor. And I, I, I believe he could speak Japanese fairly well yeah uh, but i just think he's doing this broken interpretation on purpose and it's really yeah. funny and and he was doing his uh he was also randomly throwing english words into his sentences which was pretty entertaining yes yes uh but the gosh where was i giant releasing the <laughs> so, super weapon so he, bring, American he, comes he in. brings he brings out the the super weapon which is fujin which i believe dan has the full name at at, at his Gas, at his, uh, <laughs> gas vortical device, Fujin. And, and Fujin is literally a gigantic old desk fan. Like, <laughs> if, 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 you're around, if you're around our age, it's one of those fans that you sit on a desk and it has the little buttons on the base that click, adjust click, how click. fast it blows. Yeah, exactly. It was one of those on a gigantic pedestal, and they blow the, they blow the poison gas back at Gahara, and with this, because of the wind... They're able to find a weak point on the monster's body, but bald spot. But if you want to find out what that weak spot was, since Dan decided to give it away anyway, <laughs> you can you can uh, watch the film for yourself because it's only like eighteen minutes long, so you really don't have an excuse. Yeah, to literally, watch it. literally yeah. the entire synopsis we gave is like right. ten minutes of the entire movie, and the credits right, are like right now two or three. No, minutes. shut up. Go watch it right now. <laughs> You can, and we'll tell you where you can watch it, and why we're going to tell you where you can watch it. Because the only there's no domestic release, and the only the unless you want to pay fifty dollars for a nineteen minute movie. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll we'll cover that later. We'll, we'll get into that. Yeah, exactly. We we will discuss this. First off, we want to talk a little bit about the the monster design is very very easy to talk about. It's what it's of course supposed to be a saurian bipedal the theropod, dinosaur, lizardish, Godzilla, kaiju, reptile-looking thing. It just has a bunch of really, really long hair on it, so it's kind of similar to the whole, what is it, the ring, the spooky... It's not even just the ring. I know it's yeah, really existed the, long the before that. From, the, real, the, the girl from the ring, I can't think of her name off yeah. the top of my head. But the concept of the little girl with long black hair, ghost, specter, scary kind of thing, has existed long before the ring, but that's just a a trope of Japanese ghost stories, if you will. And that's the, I believe the big inspiration of that. At least that's what I've taken away in my research and what I've seen. But that's, that's, that's Gahara in a nutshell. It's got a lot of hair on it. I question the poisonous gas thing. I think it's just burnt hair and I would die from burnt hair if it was that much too, getting hit by incendiary tank rounds, but, but yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm good with poison gas. We can do that too. Yeah, you know, the suit, I get that it was supposed to be, like, a Godzilla-type thing. You know, it honestly kind of reminded me of, like, the head bad guy from, uh... Attack of the Super... Oh, War of the, Attack yeah, of the Super yeah. Monsters. 
Attack of the Super Monsters. It totally reminded me of the 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 main bad guy from Attack of the Super Monsters. Like Lord to the point where I was like, the point where I was like expecting him to start to start yelling, "Crush, destroy, <laughs> destroy the human." <laughs> I, love I love it. I do. I do like the suit, though. I mean, this was made uh, for a television network, and you could tell. Yeah. You know, it's not. It's not as good as other things, but it, it's really good for its time. And you know, this was, was two thousand and nine, so it was obviously shot on a on a tight budget. It was done in HD, though, and and you know, the shots and stuff look great for as little budget as I believe they had. I, I don't know exactly what the budget was. Uh, the special effects shots were actually pretty good. Like, I was surprised by, like, how, how well done, like, some of the special effects stuff were. The reason for the special effects being as good as they are, the executive producers, of course, Shinji Higuchi, which was a writer slash director slash special effects artist, and, well, that's one of the reasons. Of course, he actually worked on the Ungenesis Evangelion. He worked on... The Gamera Heisei trilogy. He worked on GMK. He worked on Shin Godzilla. So the guy's a very, very talented individual. Knows how to do his stuff. The director of Kiyotaka Taguchi was the director and the director of special effects. He actually did the special effects for a chunk of the later Godzilla films. So we had a very, very good uh, staff on hand for that. And creature design was by, again, just... I can't remember, I didn't write down specifically who did the creature design, but they actually worked on the later Millennium Godzilla films, and of course our stunt coordinator was Tsutomu Kitagawa, who was Godzilla from 1999 to 2005. Hmm, that makes sense then. We had a very, very, very good production staff on this, and and even though the entire movie was tongue-in-cheek, which I, I do enjoy... Well, again, we'll get in that later. But for what they had, the little budget, and for a 20-minute movie, I would have watched it if it was like an hour and a half long movie. So, I mean, they did a really good job. I mean, of course, within the restraints of their budget, but in their budget, even making it look like an older movie, like a cheaper movie, and poking fun, they still did a really good job with what yeah, they Yeah, they had. really did. Well, that being said, let's, uh, let's jump on to... Because this is a fairly short one, so I mean we only have so much to talk about here. Like I said, we've covered almost the entire plot of the movie in like ten minutes. So, what what about film availability and pricing? I think this one should be a quick one to sum up. This should be a very quick one because I checked eBay and I couldn't even find it. I checked a couple import sites I know of, and honestly, the only place I found a listing for it was PlayAsia.com, and it was out of stock. So. I found it on uh, Amazon.jp, and it was 7,280 yen, which is just about $80. So it's actually about 70 bucks. Like, but. Yeah, like like 65 It's somewhere between 65 and 70 which is pretty outrageous. But, I mean, Japanese home media prices are pretty high, so it's not too surprising. Yeah, that's how they've always been. So if that's, you know, don't let that shock you. That's just how their home media prices are. It's just, they're expensive. That's Japan for you. Nothing wrong with that, just how they roll. But yeah, same for me. Like I said, it's just not out there, and that's kind of, we can we can segue. We'll use this section to kind of talk about. I actually got the movie long ago, I think back in 2010, maybe even 2009, long, not long after it was released. Since it was done on television, it wasn't but maybe a month or two, or even not even that long that it actually hit DVD and Blu-ray in Japan. I actually got it from a friend of mine who had ordered it from Japan, and Technically, it was a bootleg thing. It was a long, long ago in the early days of Kaiju Movie Review, which we don't do that anymore. Actually, I have it somewhere. I didn't even watch that. Me and Zach actually watched, uh, at least I am assuming you used the, the, the place I suggested for you, but we watched it on Daily Motion. It's not the best quality of release of it. It's still pretty good, but it's all subtitled, so you can watch it and understand what's going on. Yeah, I, that's the that's the one I had to use because of the... That was literally the only place I could find it. Like I checked, I checked around, and like the Play Motion was literally the only version I could find. And you know, that's that's just how it is. I mean, it's just not out there. And this was kind of, it's it's a good show. Just look it up. I'm not going to give any exact addresses, and we're not going to put anything in the link. Of course, we know we don't. I'm going to mention this like I will probably a million times from now into the future. Zach will do the same. We don't advocate watching this, but there was no English release of the film. It got released back in 2009 in Japan, and who's to say if it'll ever get re-released or even released here in the States? It's so esoteric and obscure and obscure 
of a kaiju or an, an obscure kaiju film that it, it probably won't ever get a, a Western release. Or any, yeah, yeah I don't, e- I, don't, I don't even know that the Japanese release had English subtitles either, which I, I highly doubt it. It did. did. So. No, it did. It did. Oh, it did. Okay. Yeah, but it released in that, Japan. That's English that's sub- su- that's surprising. And then I, I know if you can find it, the Blu-ray at the very least is region free. I don't know about the DVD. Yeah, the Blu-ray would be. I'm sure the DVD is is, is the correct. Is it won't it won't work unless you have a Japanese DVD player or a, or a universal region free DVD player. But, uh, yeah, it is out there. It's just we couldn't find it, and you're better off just watching it online and saving yourself 80 bucks. So, All right, Zach, closing statements. What do you have to say about this movie? What's your recommendation? Uh, you know, I enjoyed it. I think part of it was the, the length, honestly. Like, it, it felt like uh, it, was, it was just felt like a classic kind of Showa-era kaiju film uh, without all of the, I guess, like, filler. Like, it was pretty much just straight up the action scenes. Like, like you, you know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. kind of, you cut out the human element and it's pretty much just the monster. Like yep. the, this was a kaiju film that focused like 99% on the monster. There yeah, was the, very little human nonsense and it was, yeah, it was, just, it was a straight up just boom. No, no, it's true. It's true. There were like a, a minute or two, maybe three of setup at the beginning, but that was it. And then after that, it was just, hey, look, there's Gahara. Watch us deal with him for seven, eight minutes and so on and so forth. The only time, yeah, the only time you really get any kind of exposition again is when when Random American Guy shows up. Yep, yep. I love Random American Guy. He's good. He's good times. Uh, that's, that's, I hope that's a thing that we can, like, reference back to in the future. Like, I really want Random American Guy to co- pop up in other films. And we could technically do it with... Godzilla Final Wars, but not really because it's Don Fry and you can't insult Don Fry. Don Fry is awesome. He's got a savage mustache. Well, he's so. a pro wrestler, dude. Oh yeah, I know, dude. That a pro did, wrestler, brother. He did wrestling and uh, you know mixed martial arts as well. So, yep, he's awesome. So, you say, so what? What is that? Is it a recommendation just based on uh, it being I, short? I say, I say, I say, watch it. It's it's a short movie. It's fun. It's enjoyable. It has good special effects. The design of Gahara is pretty interesting. Yeah, I say uh, it's it's worth watching for all those things and Random American Guy. Yep, yep. Uh, like, of course, I share Zach's sentiment, sentiment exactly. Not that I... I try to deviate from that when it's absolutely necessary, but I don't do it if it's not true. Uh, yes, I love the movie, and I actually... I love it, though. Like, I, I'm, I'm much stronger towards it. Uh, I watched it long ago. I loved it then. I had, I had a friend... They actually used to do videos for the channel long, long ago. Her name was Stephanie. I'm sure if any of the old time fans holler if you remember that. But she did old Ka- go, old old Goji, Goji girl did Kaiju Quickie. Yep, yeah, Kaiju Quickie many many moons ago. But she did that first, and then I did a uh, an episode called Pushing Product where I talked about Gahara for a little bit. It wasn't a proper review like this one, so we've pretty much covered it in any any and every facet that we possibly could. But interesting interesting note when I. Searched when I searched the film on YouTube, uh, the Kaiju Quickie episode actually came up on the first page. Nice, good. Well, we need to get this one on the top. It needs to be number one. We will get it there one day. But anyhow, it's a great show. There's a lot of references in it. There's a lot of references, like I said at the beginning, War of the Gargantuas. There's uh, Invasion of the Astro Monster or Godzilla vs. Monster Zero. There's tons of references to old show of films even the goofy you know the desk fan scene which i absolutely love because it's all done tongue-in-cheek don't let it make it sound yeah. stupid it, it well it is but it's all done there's, tongue-in-cheek but respectfully and there's, they, there's also there's also some small some small nods to like ultraman and yep, that kind of stuff yep, yep. in there as well so yeah and, and uh i'm not we won't tell you it because it's mm. there there is a is a, a spoiler like a, a trailer at the end of it for a, a sequel that they've never done. so But it's there, and you can watch it, so you can at least kind of see what happens. But, yeah, they poke fun at Ultraman and maybe a little bit at Ultra Q. And uh, just... just... They, did, they, Go ahead. They, they poke fun at Ultraman, but they didn't Red King follow through with it. Those They didn't Red King follow through with it. Yeah. I know, it would have been funny. Because they gave us so much, I thought it would actually show up. But it, it, it's good times. It's just over the top. It's very, very fun. Watch it. Like I said, it's 20 minutes. If you hadn't seen it, it's online for free. I, I wish it would be in English. They would do it because if they ever did a, a Western release of it, I would 
do a video exclusively. It's like, hey, they're releasing this in the West. You need to go buy it instead of listening to the bull crap we talked about at this such and such time. But yes, totally recommend it, 100%. That being said, Zach, do you want to uh, do your normal shout-out, sir? Absolutely. Uh, you can find me on cultureshock.com where I am, and this is probably going to be news to Dan, but it doesn't affect him, so where I am now the actually the editor of the pro wrestling section. Yeah, congratulations. Yep. I didn't e- know that. Exactly. No, I, I just I just moved. It was it was a verti- it was like a lateral move. It's nothing. Nothing. Just so I'm just in a different section now. So anyway, I'm, I'm now the editor of the pro wrestling section. And then you can also find me doing some podcasts. I'm on Kaiju Movie Review which you're listening to, which I hope you knew that. And I'm <laughs> on Running the Ropes, which is Culture Shock's pro wrestling podcast. We primarily cover WWE, but a goal for 2017 is to branch out into other things. So maybe we'll get some other stuff going on, some TNA, some New Japan. We'll see what happens. Uh, and then our our video game podcast, which is Pick Up and Play. And that's about all. Oh, and, oh wait, and, and, and. You can Man. find me on Twitter, at CultureZact, Culture with a K. All right, well... You know where I am. I'm here every two weeks with Mr. Zach doing Kaiju Movie Review. And in between those two weeks, doing episodes of Monster Bites, which is our our short fact-slash-trivia-based Kaiju-slash-monster movie show that we do with just random little tidbits of information about random bits of the monster subgenre. So they're just short little episodes. If you hadn't seen one, they're usually no longer than uh, two to four minutes. And they're just a good way to burn some time in between these longer podcasts coming up. But of course, I do these every two weeks with Monster Bites. I am the uh, media director, multimedia director. Is that what I am technically still? <laughs> yes, that is yeah. still your title. Multimedia director. I, I forget. I, I just do my stuff and it's done. A multimedia director at cultureshock.com. Of course, I'll provide links to Zach's Twitter, my Twitter, Culture Shock's website, my Twitch channel which is where i stream all my videos and video game stuff for cultureshock.com and my other youtube channel rome underscore 21 plays so you'll find us on there somewhere rome 21 plays so but all the links will be put below and that's going to be the end for this episode but we do have a, a very very big episode coming up in two weeks after this drops i won't give any specifics but i will say we have a very special guest very big guest very big for us we're we're moving up in the world but mr zach can tell you what the movie is actually going to be that we're going to be watching in two weeks so okay so it's a big thing we got a big guest and i apologize in advance to everyone for the movie we're watching we will be watching all monsters attack aka gojira minira gabara orukaiju daishingeki A.K.A. Godzilla's Revenge. It'll be good. We talked about it not long ago in Culture Shock. There there was a lot of AKAs. That's okay. It's good. So you guys look forward to that. It'll be a big one. Make sure you tune in for it. We'll see you next time, guys.